Well said. Um, it's interesting. Uh, as I talk with clients, app development has become a very hot topic. Now, not all ideas or concepts are techn technologically advanced, but quite often um, there is a technology side, a research side. So, Kim. What's the best way to approach a plan of attack for research and development? I had this idea, I've got some technical expertise, but I'm creative, I'm the idea guy. Don't know a lot about the research and development side. How can you help me with that uh, next step? I think that's a good question. I think, uh, if I can, I'll insert a couple of plugs for um, upcoming sessions of this series too that will guide you through some of these steps as well. Oftentimes, one of the first things that you're going to do as you start to do research and development is think about what a prototype is going to look like. What is this product going to look like when it gets in front of customers? Um, and that's something that we'll talk just a little bit about today, but they're going to have the next, I think it's the next session in this series is going to be all about prototype development and how you set up that process. Um, and then we've also been talking a lot about intellectual property so far this morning, this afternoon. Um, and that's going to be the following session is going to talk all about intellectual property and how you really define that for your idea. Um, so that's definitely part of both of those steps are part of the R&D process. And again, there's no one straight path to doing a research and development project for something that's new to the market. But there are a lot of things that are very similar as you start to go through research and development. One of the things we recommend at the SBTDC is that you actually start at the end of the process and be thinking about who your customer is, who's going to buy whatever it is that you're producing, or who's going to purchase the service that you're going to provide, because some of you will be developing innovative services as well as products. And not all of them are going to be technology-based either, so they may not need a lot of scientific research that goes on behind the scenes. But they still have a development path, and you still have to ask a lot of questions as you're putting together that product. So starting from the customer, identifying who that might be. Um, as one example, one quick example, Marty quite often brings to these events a tartan plaid scarf that's novel, that is something that was produced here at ECU. It's a scarf that's being sold directly to a consumer. So it's got a very different research and development type of path where you might ask people what kind of material they might like to have that made out of, the size, you might talk to manufacturers about what's possible as far as making that scarf and making it at a cost-effective um, price so that you can sell it for a profit. For someone who's developing a new drug, the process might be completely different and you'd need to consider all of your customers, the insurance companies that are gonna pay for the drug, the patients who are going to take the drug, the physicians who will prescribe the drug, um, the manufacturers who are going to produce it and distribute it for you, all of those might be considered customers of one type or another. And you need to think from their perspective, what is it that you have to validate? What types of features do you have to prove in order to get them to buy your product? And that's how you start building out your research and development plan and figuring out how much money it's gonna cost and how much time it's going to take. And all of those sorts of things, again, um, that's one of the things that we do at the SBTDC. We help you work through those processes, as do our colleagues at the Tech Transfer Office here on, on campus. Um, so definitely reach out and talk to your colleagues as you start to go through that R&D process. We can help make you aware of resources. One observation that I would make is um, um, these, these ideas, th these requirements, if you will, for the development process uh, are actually unbelievably complicated for somebody who is working in a laboratory or has a clinical idea or building an app in their in their college dorm um, because most of the time you have no experience or even have even thought about any of these things um, and and the fact of the matter is the, the the days of people doing this completely on their own without any help or support are probably few and far between um, uh, if they occur at all. Uh, and the earlier you can get in with people who you are confident have the knowledge and expertise to help you, who you can trust, and who uh, will help move this process forward, the better off you're going to be. Because it's, it's almost impossible to do this by yourself. Um, and you have to be careful. I will, one of our, our um, 
uh, catalysts actually was the tech transfer office um, called me up one day and said there's this program at NC State uh, called the high tech program is it okay if we mention your technology as a, um, a potential substrate for their um, master's program and I said sure and next thing you know we're the, um, our technology is being presented at the, the year-end meeting by this group of uh, executive master's folks um, in the a NC Tech High Tech program. Mm -hmm. They opened all sorts of doors for us. It created all sorts of uh, interest in places we never, I never would have been able to get interest in. It also created some interesting uh, collaborations that turned out to be less than beneficial um, uh, that we were fortunately able to get ourselves out of uh, before it became uh, too detrimental. Um, uh, and it's just that in and of itself is a good example of you, you have to be careful, you have to be protective, but you also have to be really open-minded about making sure that you do collaborate when the opportunity to do that comes down the pike. Um, uh, and that's true whether you're developing you know, a pharmaceutical, uh, you know, right now, money for pharmaceutical development in Research Triangle Park does not exist. However, if you're developing a medical device, there's a lot of money in the, uh, in, in the RTP area and a lot of money out in California, and it's a good time to be developing a medical device. And that's a cyclical thing that's changed over the last six or seven years. Um, uh, and, um, um, so you can't, you really have to keep your mind open, you have to do your homework as much on the people and the opportunities to collaborate as you do on the legal aspect of it and the cost aspect and the marketing aspect and, and all these other things. Your role, in my opinion, your role is you know this, this molecule, you know this technology, you know this technology application, you know your vision for that app better than anybody else in the world. And if you lose sight of that in the context of all the other things you have to do, you're going to fail. 